Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Thursday, the 22nd of February. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by Joshua Barry. How are we doing, Joshua? Good, Derek. Yeah, sunny day in Glasgow, so uh, can't complain. Nice day all around. How about you? Uh, got a bit of a cold here, unfortunately, which is mm-hmm. uh, not ideal, uh, and uh, it's gloomy and uh, grey down in Warrington, so uh, not the best, but... Uh, oh. Never mind, uh, we can brighten up uh, well, brighten up my day by talking about Rangers. Uh, before mm-hmm. we do that, just a quick word, folks. You can see the banner on your screen if you're watching us on Facebook, uh, YouTube, or indeed Instagram, where we are now live. The MPH group, if you're looking for home improvements or even a new boiler, then these are the guys to call. The all-important links are in the description below. Also in the description below today is a great piece from Chris on the Rangers Review website, uh, focusing on John Lundstrom and his upturn in form under the new manager and why uh, the manager uh, and Rangers want to keep the midfielder at the club. Negotiations taking place, of course, about uh, extending the 30-year-old stay at Ibrox, he's made no secret about the fact that he loves life at Rangers. And uh, I think as of the out-of-contract players in the summer, he is the standout for me uh, personally uh, that Rangers need to look to tie down going forward. What that length of contract may look like, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, I think it's imperative, given he is one of the first names on the team sheet at this moment in time. The manager trusts him. He's getting a tune out of him. He looks much leaner. He's bossing the middle of the park. I think it's a no-brainer that Rangers get him tied down for a longer period of time, which is a remarkable turnaround from uh, the start of the season and spells during John Lundstrom's uh, Rangers career where it's fair to say he's not been flavour of the month, Joshua. And mm. uh, he's certainly, he's, he's had dips in form and uh, uh, peaks in form, it's fair to say. He's got he's in a peak just now. I think he's playing his best fo- football since he arrived from uh, Sheffield United. And uh, yeah, long may that continue. Yeah, I, th- I think it's his best, definitely his best domestic spell. Obviously he had that, um, that spell in, in Europe, which everyone knows about and everyone remembers, but... It feels like a lot of things have combined kind of at the right time for him and that it's, it's a style that probably suits him a little bit better. Uh, the overall mood is better. But again, to, to I think to be fair to him, like so many others, we could have this conversation probably about, as we have done, Derek, about seven or eight of the outfield players. You compare Lundstrom's performance when he gave the ball away in uh, Aris Limassol um, in the, the game just before, uh, or two games before, um, uh, the new manager, Clement, came into the club. You compare that to now and it's, it's a very different picture. So he, he's probably, Chris's piece goes into some of the reasons behind his upturn. Um, you know, the fact, as, as has been publicly stated, that, that Rangers are working to to, uh, to tie him down to a new contract. I think he's probably the only one um, that, that I'd be inclined to keep at the moment, Derek. I think it would be different terms to when he came. Obviously, he was coming off the back of a, a good Premier League season. He'll want to stay um, at the club as, as well. I think he, he's made that known. And and it makes sense. I still think it's an area of the pitch where Rangers will be interested to see what they do there in the summer. Dio Mandy came in and, and I thought he looked very good um, at the weekend against St. Johnson because, as Clement said, he can play as a, a 6, 8 or 10 and gives you lots of options, even if you look at the, the build-up to his goal. I think that's how he manages to get free because he's quite unpredictable in whether he's going to uh, move to the ball or moving behind. But Lundstrom has been the real consistency in the outfield selection, um, aside from, from Goldson and Tavernier, hasn't he? And I think at the moment, it makes sense to, to extend that contract. And you just hope that, I guess, that, that form continues into the, the crucial part of the season, not least on, on those Thursday nights. But um, yeah, I agree with you, Derek. I think it's the best form of his, his Rangers career. And I think he's playing in a He's playing in a style that's a bit quicker, a bit more vertical, requires him to, to keep the ball a little bit less. And also, as maybe we'll come on to, to, to talk about, demands a little bit less of him in the build-up. So it maybe mitigates some of his, his weaknesses as well. And yeah, he's, he's playing some really good football off the back of that. Yep. Yeah, uh, lots of comments coming in um, agreeing with us that he does deserve that new deal. In terms of the, the length of it, Joshua... Um, I've seen a few comments saying that a two-year deal w- w- would be suffice. He is 30 years of age at this moment in time. Uh, mm-hmm. Who knows uh, how long Philip Clement's going to be at Rangers for. Let's hope it's for a long time. Uh, but you'd never know what's going to happen, what's around the corner in football. Would a, a two-year deal, would you be for that? Or should it be a, 
a one-year extension like we've seen last season with the likes of uh, Ryan Jack. Of course, Leon Balligan's on, on a one-year deal at this moment in time as well. I think at 30, Lundstrom would be looking for more than a year, wouldn't he? Understandably. Yeah. So I, I, if, if you're him, you're probably pushing towards a, a two-year deal with the, the option of another. Um, I think a two-year deal somewhere in the middle where his game, you know, we've seen him play at centre-back as well. His game does rely on a lot of physicality. So you, you've got to look at where he's going to be when, he, when he's 32. Um, but he, he's just been such an ever-present. And, and I've been someone who... I think that at times Rangers still need someone at the base of that midfield that's probably more of a natural um, with their back to goal and to, to help them play through pressure. And uh, at the moment, as we, we've discussed quite a lot, I think Rangers are turning teams just a lot more. Um, and and I, I think that's coincided with ones from improving. He, he, it feels like I've not got stats to back this up, but it feels like he's looking forward a little bit more. You think of that, the goal he created, where was it away at St. Mirren and away at uh, Hibs as well, wasn't it, for Red Van? So yeah. it feels like you know he, he, he is... Uh, his style is maybe improving somewhat under the manager as well because he came into the club obviously Derek and I think the plan was to play him as the on the right side of that midfield three uh, you remember his game against Dundee United away where he didn't have a great game Rangers lost their unbeaten streak in the league uh, one 0 uh, that day and and he, he, it's obviously had a difficult start at Ibrox and it took really until Giovanni Van Bronckhorst came into the club for that to change I remember speaking to someone um, who said that there was a game, I think it was Rangers beat Dundee United 1-0 uh, late half in your penalty, and I think Lundstrom came off, off at half-time. And I remember speaking to someone at that time who said, uh, you know, how does he, not, I, yeah, I guess, how does he come back from a situation? How does he make a career here? Because it's just not worked up until now. And there was a, there was a lot of pressure on him because although he wasn't a marquee signing uh, there, he was... Uh, he came in for a lot of money, didn't he? And, and that summer, there wasn't any marquee signings, so it was probably more focus on him. But I think in a similar way to to, to, to Dessers, he, he's had the fortitude to to come back from it uh, and, and, and to to make almost come back from it twice, obviously, with the, the, the initial season and the European run, uh, and then this season as well. Um, again, you remember, he got set, sent off against... Um, who was it he got sent off against in the, the Europa League game where Morelos yeah. scored? Alish Kurt, yeah, what's the Aris Lima, so... So he's had a few few ups and downs, uh, and, and he didn't come in to play that holding midfielder role. And at, th at times, I think that's not necessarily been to uh, that has been to his detriment. He's just kind of fallen into that role by default. But I think he's improved. I think the style suits him a little bit more. Um, and obviously, in, in, in big games, you, you kind of need those legs and that physicality in the middle of the pitch as well. He needs, and the, the biggest, I guess, um, indicator of how important he's been to Rangers is. The amount that Philippe Clement has spoken about him and relied upon him, and I think that probably tells you everything about you know how highly he rates Lundstrom and why he wants to, to keep him at the club beyond the summer. Yeah, Neil McLean says, hey, good morning, guys. Big Phil has made Lundy the best on earth again. Phil has brought the best out of all of them. Long may it continue. And uh, just on uh, the contract situation, interesting point from Scott here. He says, Lundstrom, of course, will have other options with more money possibly, so his financials may outweigh his heart uh yeah listen there will be clubs looking at how he's performing at rangers uh and uh, they may be looking to tempt him away in the summertime but um going by what he says whenever we speak to him uh he's loving life uh at rangers so uh yeah an interesting one francis with the point of uh, i mentioned leon balligan there she says uh Lunny and balligan should get contract extensions two years with an option on a third balligan, balligan will be like Balga would be like 45 by the time he's had his third year then, wouldn't he? Yeah. Maybe not. 40 yeah. almost. He's th 35, 36. Um, yeah. I think uh, I mentioned this when I was on, uh, I think it was on, when I done that, uh, I know many of you are on TikTok. Folks did a TikTok q &A yesterday, but Balogun came up. I said that he could turn out to be a modern day Davy Weir, if you like, who played well into his 40s. Uh, he, he keeps himself fit and, and able. He's another one like Lundstrom, a big leader in that squad. Uh, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too opposed to seeing him getting a, another year extension. Balligan, uh, I think he's a good guy to have around the place and around the squad. Let us know in the comments, folks, if you agree. Do you agree, Joshua? I'm not saying he's the uh, yeah. first pick or anything like that, but I think is a I think it's important to have experienced pros in and around the building. Yeah, but I also. <laughs> I think, look, when Balogun came back in the summer, I remember when um, the, the kind of first materialised that he was going to come back and, and there was a lot of surprise about that. He's been really good, hasn't he? And he was Clement's first choice centre-half uh, next to Conor Goldson up until he got that injury. I would be inclined to not keep him because I think 
his game the difference and something like uh, Davy Weir is obviously the, the the example. But I think Balogun himself cited it at one point, maybe after just before Christmas time. Um, Balogun's game relies on a lot of physicality. I think he's probably got the most interceptions of, of any Rangers player because he plays in the front foot, often jumping into uh, the man ahead of him. Um, could understand the, the the thinking behind giving him another uh, year's contract, but I think that is a position in the pitch where Rangers should look to um, have, have a bit of change. I'd be very surprised if they go into the next season with the same four centre-backs in there. there you know, ben Davies hasn't really played much at all again this season. Um, still obviously got two years in his contract. John Suter, I think, is playing some of the best football of his, his Rangers career at the moment, but he, I, don't, I still don't think the left side of the back four is always the most natural for him. So, Ideally, uh, you look at the type of profiles that Rangers have signed on the left wing and Oscar Cortez and, and in the middle in, in, in Mohamed Diamande. Those are the two styles of transfers I'd like to see extended to the defence as well. Someone who can come in and, and maybe compete with a suitor. And you've got to remember that, that Connor Goldson as well is, is not getting younger. And is he going to still be the, the spine of your team when he's 34, 35? Um, he's only, what, 30, 31 at the moment. I'd like to see, uh, and I think that will be a focus for Rangers in the summer, a younger player, a little bit of investment, and especially on the left uh, left hand side of the defence. Although, as obviously you and Chris touched on yesterday, and we're going to do an extra video on uh, later today, um, the defence uh, as as a team, the defensive numbers are very good at the moment. So I can understand the, the, the thinking behind just keeping that going. I'd like to see a bit of investment and, and a younger profile, similar to Adil Mandy or Cortez, come into to the left side of that defence in the summer. Yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, a comment that caught my eye um, from Day in the Life. He says, uh, "Well, Pepe, he was playing in the Champions League, and he is uh, he's forty. Uh, I did see a, a little tweet from uh, TNT Sports last night um, of Pepe saying, two decades later, Pepe is still dropping elite performances in the Champions League with a little white emoji.' Uh, and they had, of course, his uh, performance had a picture of him against uh, Arsenal last night. Good result for them, beating the Gunners by a goal to nil. And they also had an image of him." Uh, celebrating uh, his goal against Rangers back in 2005. A little picture of uh, Fernando Rickson in the background, uh, but of course he was on the losing side that evening. Rangers defeating Porto 3-2. I was there. Ibrox was bouncing. Uh, what a night that was. Um, right, let's get to some more comments that are coming. An interesting one, uh, just uh, finishing up on, on Lundstrom. Uh, Blue Bells are blue, says, not just a new contract. I'd love Lunny as captain in the unlikely event to have moves on in the summer. Um, Lonnie is captain material. Joshua, would you agree? You don't... Uh, no. The captain's... Uh, a, a big focus of the interview that we did with, with James Tavenu, I think, was on leadership and what it means. What is a captain? Um, there is loads of different leaders in, in, in any team. And if you listen to Clement speak, you'll say that there's lots of different people in the leadership group. And he spoke, was it not after the game of the weekend where he spoke about having a divided leadership in a good way and that there's lots of different senior pros in there. Jack Butlin is someone who's come in and obviously with his experience has quickly become a leader in that dressing room. You've got Connor Goldson, who's the vice captain, but again, someone who's very vocal. James Tavenier, I think the, the, the perfect reason um, he is the, the Rangers captain. And I know there was some social media talk about that yesterday, but... Um, lead by example. I don't know about you, Derek, but if, if I was playing on a football team, I'd much rather that have a captain who was able to, to get you out of a hole as opposed to someone who was going to shout at me. And uh, again, that's something that we spoke yeah, about in that interview. Yeah, you don't, yeah, you yeah. very rarely get those sort of captains anymore. Now, you need vocal characters and, and you need yeah. vocal, and you don't need just need vocal characters for, to, to I guess, um, motivate players around you. But one of the reasons you need vocal characters, and this is an interesting point in regards to Lundstrom is uh, when we were away in, in, in La Manga and Rangers were playing against us at Hertha Berlin, um, one of the key uh, moments you need a vocal player is when someone who's leading when to trigger the press, when telling the team when to get back into their shape, kind of coordinating things on the pitch. And Lundstrom is very much that player who, if, if you listen in the quiet moments at Ibrox, he'll be the one who's screaming to improve the tempo, uh, telling his team when to jump up quite often and telling them when to drop back because he's in the middle of the pit. He's in the perfect position uh, to do that, and, and especially if you look at the way that Clement's team press, and this ties into the uh, conversation about the defensive structure, often they'll go man for man in the final third, so that needs to be coordinated pretty well. So does he need to have the, the armband to be a leader? Absolutely not. I think you want lots of leaders. And, and the conversation of the captain, which we've had lots of times before, and, and I'm sure we'll have lots of times again, I, I just think that 
leading by example, leading by the way you play is, is, is the most important thing. And Tavernier's done that consistently, not obviously not without faults, but I think he's done that far more consistently than, than the majority, if not all, of the squad over the last uh, number of years. And, and obviously he's got a lot of natural leaders, you'd hope, uh, around them like John Lundstrom, who, who don't necessarily need the armband to, to, to hold that role within the squad. Yeah, he's one of a number that has improved under the new manager, Edwards, with the point. Tavnier is going nowhere under Clement. There is a real chance we could have a dominant period, and Tav will be part of that. Uh, yeah, I would love to see him lifting that Premiership trophy aloft come the end of the season. Uh, big uh, warm welcome to Alan Kincaid, who joins uh, as a, a YouTube member. Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, thank you for your support, buddy. Um, welcome to... Uh, our growing community. If you want to join the, the YouTube uh, um, members section, folks, uh, just hit the join button on the Rangers Review uh, homepage on mm -hmm. YouTube. It has to be a desktop version, uh, so on a laptop or whatever else. If you're on Apple or Android, uh, there is a, a way to download the, the desktop version on your phone to uh, sign up and join, uh, and uh, you get access to three to five more videos a week. There will be one later on, Josh. Well, yes. no, that's we think available to all. A, a, def a yeah. look at the defensive improvement under Clement in recent weeks. Yeah, we should say as well that if people, I know a lot of people listen live, but a lot of people watch or listen back as well. And if you want to listen, uh, watch without the adverts, we upload an ad-free version to the YouTube member section as yeah. well. So if you're maybe someone that, you know, we're always amazed at people li uh, listening in, in, I don't know, South South, South America or, or five in the morning, whatever, whatever um, comment yeah. seems to come up uh, every single day. If you don't want to watch live and you want to catch up without the YouTube adverts, if you join the YouTube members, you, you don't only get the extra videos, but you get it ad free. And yeah, the, these extra videos, we did, did one on Todd Campbell next week. We're, we're kind of calling it Rangers Review Extra, but we're open to new names, but allows us to go in in podcast format with some of the the, 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 the graphics from articles and whatnot, just explore that the theme's a little bit deeper. So a few interesting points, you know, I, I saw a lot of comments yesterday about, you know, is it just about Jack Butland, the reason the defensive record is so good? Um, how does it compare to, to the title winning season? What are some of the reasons why? Um, how is it improved since the winter break? So we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. It should be with you uh, sometime in the early afternoon. Yeah, uh, recorded a members video yesterday, incidentally, folks, uh, Chief Sports Writer of the Northern Echo, Scott Wilson, who was uh, on cracking form telling us about why uh, Michael Beale failed at Sunderland. So it was uh, quite informative. So uh, that's on there uh, at, uh, at for your uh, entertainment, shall we say, if you want to have a look at that at some point. Um, there's a question that came in here um, just on Lundstrom. It's sort of indirectly... Um, Another player in the midfield area who hasn't seen much game time, it's fair to say. He has been coming back from injury, Joshua. But Neil Jameson says, do you think Raskin will be offloaded? There's been a few comments coming in. Uh, Side Drone says, has Raskin been frozen out of the team due to poor performances from him? Um, I just think he has to show the manager in training that he's deserving of a, a starting place. Uh, at this moment in time, he's obviously not doing enough. I think you need to caveat that that by uh, saying yes, just coming back from uh, that injury. You can't expect him to be scintillating uh, on his return immediately. But uh, these players you mentioned before, Mohamed Diamandi, I thought did really well uh, on his first start against uh, St. Johnston at the weekend. You've got Dujon Sterling that can play in there. Ryan Jack's been uh, um, uh, managed. His, his minutes have been managed at this moment in time as well. So it was a very competitive area of the pitch. And Nico, if he wants a place, has to show the manager that he's deserving of one. Yeah, and you've also got Tom Lawrence now in those games yes. at Ibrox, who's been really good. And 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 so, so I guess Raskin's come into to a very different midfield picture since he left. I, I, Clement spoke about it recently, where he explained that he's just getting back up to speed. But I have been surprised that we've we've not seen him as much in recent weeks. Um, obviously, it started away at uh, St Mirren, didn't he? And, and and Hibbs as well, where he picked up that that knock so you'd presume that coming into this busy period of games Derek he'd play more I like him he's not had a good season overall um after you know impressing coming into the club last season so he's probably just in a position to, to probably repeat ourselves from, from the last few weeks where he's still young he's 22 you know he's not been the captain of his his under 21 side and, and being so highly rated for, for no reason maybe there's some stylistic differences as we saw with Campwell that Clement is focusing on 
on, on drilling into him before he goes back into the team. Maybe it is just that some injuries take you a little bit longer to get back to to, to, to full sharpness. I still expect him to to be here at Rangers beyond the summer and and and, and make a good impact at Ibrox. I think he's a player with a really high ceiling. I just think it's been a while since he's had a, a good game. And I think it, it ranges when you've a club like Rangers when you've not had a good game in a while, um, then the, the narrative starts to change pretty quickly. And he's coming to midfield and now as Dujon Sterling's playing somewhere, sometimes in the midfield, sometimes out wide, sometimes covering in defence. Uh, Tom Lawrence obviously at Ibrox then gives you a nice balance and, and fits in with what Clement's Clement wants to do, which is uh, really, as Connor Goldson said in the recent interview, strangle teams at home, not let them out, keep them in the opposition final third and, and attack pretty relentlessly. Diomandi came in, I thought, on that pitch was a really good performance, Derek, and the key takeaway for me, and again, if you watch the goal back, you'll notice how Dan Phillips, uh, I think it's Dan Phillips who's marking him, mm. he sees Diomandi go short, but but because he has this kind of 6 eight, ten blend of a profile, which I think suits Clement's football quite well, um, he's quite difficult to mark because he's not predictable. You know, if you're maybe marking Lundstrom in that example, you, you, you're not expecting him to run off the back of you and, and hit a shot like that from, from 20 yards. But Dio Mandy obviously has the, the capacity to to spin in, as we spoke about when he arrived, yeah, quite a complete midfield profile who probably is comfortable taking the ball off the centre-backs with his back to goal. is a press-resistant profile, but then can also run beyond, as we saw uh, from him repeatedly throughout the game. So th there's a lot of competition in that area. I, I think it would just take Raskin a bit of time to... to to recover his, his form and, and get minutes, Derek, but it's a much better situation to have than the, the midfield yeah. situation that Clement had a few months ago. Yeah, that's a really competitive area of the pitch. Uh, and this was an interesting point from Mark Wilson. Uh, just on the defence, uh, Joshua, um, we might uh, uh, touch on this later on, perhaps, but he says, uh, reading a few articles in Match Analysis recently, shows Goldson as our weakest player statistically. Does Joshua have anything on this? Um do you have anything on this, Joshua? I mean, statistically, it's quite difficult with defenders uh, yeah. that because what stats do you use to... I'll give you an example. You could say a defender's not been uh, dribbled past. Um, I think the one a few seasons ago was always, always with Van Dyke, but that's not considering how many players have attempted to dribble past him. It's, it's difficult to, to have a stat and say, even clean sheets because you could have a clean sheet, but the opposition could miss three fantastic chances. So... The, 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 I, I don't know what uh, stats Mark's referring to. Um, he's had a couple of mistakes, Goldson. I think the Miofsky one is, is the obvious one. Um, and then obviously that the goal Rangers conceded at Ross County was uh, home to Ross County was, a, was a, a bit of a freak goal as well. I agree with what Chris said yesterday, which is that he'd probably rather... I don't think it's exclusive that, that defences struggle with long balls when they attack as much as, as Rangers do domestically. Um, I think you'd rather have a couple of bad goals as outliers instead of repeated patterns. Uh, Rangers have not been conceding many chances uh, at all since since football resumed. Um, Goldson is, is, I think, in moments like the Miofsky moment, you maybe think, is he losing a little bit of pace as he gets a little bit older? Probably, yeah. I don't think the, the strongest part of his game is when he has to uh, defend the space in front of him, um, which is something that I think you see quite often in old firm games. But I think overall, the, the defence has been good. Goldson and Suter have played well. Um, and, and, and it's not only, I think, the, the, the structure and the attack ahead of them is, is helping them not concede many chances. Um, but when the ball does get there, generally, they've, they've, they've been pretty good, I think, since the winter break. So maybe Mark can, can uh, tell me what, what, what stats he's meaning. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the defence is probably one of the better areas at the moment. And, and maybe Goldson isn't in his top form. Yes, he made that mistake against Aberdeen. But over the course, I think him and Suter have a pretty good partnership going on at the moment, to be honest. Yeah, uh, as I said, I've got a wee bit of a cold at the moment. And uh, thanks to Denzel, he says, uh, you're needing a big toddy, Derek. Good malt, honey and lemon. You'll still feel the same, but you won't be worried about it. Thank you for that, uh, Denzel. And uh, Neil Jameson with a, a, a suggestion here. He says, Derek, cold remedy. Chopped onion with honey and ginger in a jar. Leave for two hours and take a tablespoon of juice every three hours. Um, what's your cold remedy of choice, Joshua? Do you have any, one that, any go to remedy? Um, I uh, well, the hot toddy is my my mother in law would always give me that, and I think on a very similar note that it might, might not help, but will make you feel a bit better. I was actually quite sick over Christmas, and uh, which was which was not fun. I know people might remember from the time, and um, so I had a few of those at that time of year. Um, but re rest up, Derek. We'll make it an easy day on the Rangers review for you, and, uh, and hopefully you're back to to to, to fine form tomorrow morning. 
Yeah, it was soldier on. Uh, mm. And uh, some nice words for your good self, uh, Joshua. I am Sam, says, uh, Joshua is a beautiful man. Can you believe I'm saying that? Ha, ha, ha. So uh, he's a mm. big fan of your good self. And uh, Darren says, <laughs> good to see the intellect of Josh Barry in contrast to Derek <laughs> Clark. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Don't know, uh, about, don't know about that, Derek, but that's, that's uh, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't know about that. But it's nice to get praise instead of uh, abuse. Yeah, job, so I can't absolutely. Uh, and Don with the point, it says, uh, Derek, I watch every day and my wife always notices new stuff in your living room. You should start adding stuff. <laughs> Listen, that'll be the wife doing it, uh, Don. That is nothing to do with me. I just come in here, record uh, our videos, and that is that. But, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make note of that. See if you can spot something uh, tomorrow. Um, just another, just wanted to touch on uh, another bit of uh, news. Uh, but another player we'll, we'll discuss before we wrap up, Joshua. Barry Ferguson uh, on Go Radio was speaking about uh, Fabio Silva. He said, I want to see a bit more from him. There's no doubt about that. His work rate is good. He'll work hard for the team, but I'm expecting a bit more quality. Maybe that will come. It takes some players a bit more time to settle in. Listen, you're not a bad player if you're signed for over 30 million. Hopefully, in the coming weeks, he'll show a bit more going forward. He was then asked about his, uh, uh, Silva's um it was a quiz, of course, before about his favourite position. Uh, I think when you spoke to him, Joshua says, I'm not really a number nine because I don't like to be static in the box. I like to move and change positions with other players. I don't like to stay in the box only and, and be a number nine. I like to change positions, have connections with players, play one-twos and move deep. I am a dynamic player and I like to change my position during the game. What do you make of Barry's comments on Fabio? I've seen a few... Uh, especially thing on Monday when we recorded our video, uh, some supporters wanted to see a bit more from uh, Fabio Silva. Uh, I think we need to give him a wee bit more time, uh, as Barry says, just to get uh, up to speed. I think he's shown nice touches. Uh, I've been pretty happy with his contribution so far. We'd like to see him scoring a barrel load of goals, don't get me wrong. But um, Fabio Silva so far, what's your early assessment, Joshua? Yeah, well, that quote, Derek, which uh, has been, I've never uh, written an interview where the, the quote's been taken out of context so much, I think, mm. but it, Fabio Silva actually says, I'm, I'm not a, and obviously it's a second language, so we should remember this, yeah. you know, we're not, I'm not intelligent enough to, to speak another language at this point in my life, hopefully I will at one point, but I imagine it's pretty difficult sometimes to, to, to always communicate exactly what you're saying. He said, I'm not a, and, and it's in the, if you read the interview, which I can, it's on my Twitter, if you search Fabio Silva, um, on, on the website, you'll get it on the interview section. He says, I'm not a number nine, number nine. So, and, and then yeah. he goes on to say what you've been talking about. So the differentiation I think he's making there, um, and he, he, he relates this to the fact that he's saying, look, Clement wants me to play a certain type of football and it relates. Is he saying, I'm not a number nine, number nine, and I may be a traditional mould in that. I always want to stay in the last line. I only want 10 touches a game. I'm going to finish two of them and I'm not going to be involved otherwise. As you rightly say, he wants to to, to also drop in and, and, and be involved. But I think that's been taken out of context because when he's been saying stuff like, I'm not a number nine, I'm, num I'm not a number nine, number nine, I'm not yeah. just a goal scorer. I think what he is reiterating is that that is not exclusively what his game is about. Um, that is not the only thing that he brings. It, you know, he, he can do a lot more. And I think we've seen that in patches. Um, again, I think the Aberdeen performance from the bench was really good and home performances against uh, Ayr and, and, and Livingston as well. And there's one I'm, I'm forgetting. Big thing, big thing for me, Derek, is that, you know, to, to, to use an example, John Suter in a recent press conference was saying it's so important you get consistent games in a row to build up your best form. And Silva's been rotated all the time. And it's the same as Dessers. And, and, and you wonder, does that not help you get up to your full speed? That is what's going to happen between now and the end of the season because Clement's clearly set his stall out. That's what he wants to do, to, to have people at maximum fitness. I think he's been good so far, Silva. Um, again, he... It's probably just because he's not a good game, maybe in a couple of weeks that we start to have this conversation again. Um, but I do think, especially at Ibrox, you've seen moments of, of games where you've thought there's a real quality player here. I think, again, when he's been talking about his game, he's been trying to caveat it to say, this goals is not the only thing that you should judge me by. To, to again give another example, Todd Campbell at the weekend, Derek, I thought he had a really good game for the 60 minutes he was on the pitch. Yeah. Didn't score, didn't get an assist. Does that mean he had a bad game when he was playing at number 10? No, not necessarily. Yeah. Take, take Consider the moment where he plays the ball through brilliantly to Scott Wright after he plays the one-two with Lundstrom and he gets face in the play, but Scott Wright is on his heels. Or the moment where he flicks the ball with his back to goal and, and Wright can't find the return pass through the pitch. Whose fault was that? It's not Campwell's in those two instances. So, yeah, OK, maybe he's not got a goal or assist or in, in either of those moments, but you can't just judge it on the final outcome. So, Silva, 
I agree that there's probably more to come from him. I agree that he, he's maybe he is going to be compared against the fact that Rain, people think Rangers need a lot of goals, which of course they do to win a league title. And, and that is, there's always going to kind of be that narrative around him. Mm -hmm. um, I think he works hard as well defensively. And again, he created one of those Campbell chances by going back into the midfield. But I think there's a lot to his game. I think there's there's probably more to come, hopefully more goals to come. Um, maybe the fact that he's not played as consistently um, game on game hasn't helped him maybe build up to, to, to his peak performance so far. And it also feels like we've actually seen more of him when we've probably only seen him start, what, four games top so far, Derek? So yeah. probably somewhere, somewhere in the in-between. I think there is... Um, more to come from him, but I also think there's been some really bright spots of what we've seen so far, and, and I think that narrative concept of what type of player he is and where does that actually, where does that actually come from, I think that's probably important to mention as well. Yeah, uh, we'll wrap up with, uh, of course, the Europa League draw takes place tomorrow, 11 a.m. It's live on TNT Sports Two. Um, you'll. Uh, uh, Rangers with uh, an opportunity to play a number of uh, different teams who are involved in action tonight in the playoffs. Uh, the game's taking place uh, Feyenoord or Roma, Galatasaray or Sparta Prague, Shakhtar Donetsk or Marseille, Young Boys or Sporting Lisbon, Benfica or Toulouse, Lons or Freiburg, AC Milan or Ren or Braga or Carabag. Any teams you'd fancy Rangers taking on there, Joshua? I would fancy Rangers against uh, any one of those. Uh, that being said, I would like to potentially avoid uh, a trip to Feyenoord or uh, Roma. Mm. Uh, and uh, I think the other one there, you see uh, AC Milan uh, is, is one that you'd potentially like to avoid. Any of the others, uh, yeah, give, bring them on, as I say. Yeah, I mean, the thing is about this season, Derek, is that I, I think these next two games, and I know you and Chris will build up to it a lot tomorrow, but the, the Hearts game and the Kilmarnock game feel to me, without holding them up too much, like huge games, two of the biggest games in the season so far. I know there's two old firm games to come as well, but if Rangers can get through those games with victories, you know, playing Hearts who are in the best form, they've been in a number of seasons, and Kilmarnock away, Kilmarnock have taken a lot of, uh, points and, and, and have won repeatedly against the old firm uh, this season and we know what that pitch is like it's, it's a nighttime game if you get to through those two games with, with 10 games to go then I, I think the momentum will, 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 will you know be even greater than it is just now and that extends to the Europa League if you get a good draw and then you can get into the last eight then then who knows what could happen I would I would like one of the Italian teams from a from a point of view of, of, of going to the games but um I, I think that you'd probably want to avoid those as well and, and to, to boost your hopes of getting through. Rangers will play, correct me if I'm wrong, but Rangers will play the second leg at Ibrox because yeah. they're... So I think that's an immediate advantage because, yeah. especially without away goals, you go away, you try and keep the score, it, you get a draw, win, obviously, but you, you keep it open for Ibrox and the Ibrox factor, I think, can, can really play into it. So we'll see, looking forward to the draw. And I, I just want to flag as well, Derek Bryan saying... He's loving the content on the app. The app's completely free to download. If you go onto our Twitter page, uh, there'll be a tweet there, um, which or just search it on the app store, the Rangers Review. We put the podcast into it as well, all our articles, uh, as well as our newsletter. It's kind of a centralised place to get all of our content. So I'm sure a lot of people watching have, have downloaded the app, um, but if they have not already done so, then we'd encourage them to, to download the app as well and, and hopefully... Like Brian, enjoy uh, all the content that, that, that we put on there, which covers everything from our YouTube videos to, to articles, news, everything you, you want with a whole back catalogue of, of all our uh, content over the last couple of years. Yeah, and speaking of uh, Brian's uh, big happy birthday to uh, the great uh, Brian Loudrup, who celebrates his 55th birthday today. Hopefully you have a great day, sir. I'm sure you tune in religiously to the Ranger Review every morning. Uh, an absolute legend of this football club. So uh, yeah, happy birthday, Brian. Right, that'll do us there. Uh, thanks to everyone for interacting with the show. As ever, as uh, Joshua mentioned, we'll be recording a special show a little later on this afternoon. We hope you can join us for that. Um, so yeah, plenty on the website as well. That Chris that John Lundstrom piece from Chris is on there, so do go and check it out, folks. We'll be back again tomorrow as we look ahead to that draw and the game against Hearts in more detail. Until then, uh, enjoy your Thursday. Bye for now.